My next guest says it is crucial that America continues to back Israel in the face of growing protests here. Retired U.S. Army four-star General David Perkins joins me now. General, thanks for coming in. Uh, we, we were talking to Mike Pompeo in the last hour about the fact that now that, that in America people are just fed up with these protests because they've gone so far to support Hamas terrorists and others, that uh, Israel might feel emboldened after Passover ends next week to go into Rafah. What happens then? Specifically, what happens? What will Iran do if, if Israel goes into to Rafah? And what happens to our Arab coalition that was united against Iran during their attack of Israel? Well, it is critically important that the United States continues to back Israel, our closest ally in that part of the world, and the only democracy uh, there. Um, I think it's interesting when we see the various protests around the world, everyone's calling for a ceasefire, which means they want it to go back as it was on 6 October before Hamas unilaterally, without provocation, attacked Israel. So they're trying to rewind the tape, which also means you will leave Hamas in a position where it can, at will, attack Israel again. So it's incredibly important that Israel destroy Hamas's capability to control the Palestinian people, oppress the Palestinian people, and export their terrorism into Israel. Now, it's a difficult balancing act because they need to destroy Hamas's war-making capability at the same time minimize collateral damage. So it's a tough mission, but they really don't have any choice but to take Hamas capability to attack again away from them. Okay, but General, again, my specific question is, what will Iran do then? Because Iran might feel emboldened itself. If, if Israel goes into Rafah and there are bound to be civilian casualties, when that happens, if, if Iran strikes Israel again, will the coalition, the Arab coalition that was united against Iran's strike, hold? Or will it fall apart because of what they see in Rafah? I think the Israeli response to the Iranian attack was very strategic, thinking about that very singular point. A lot of people were complaining, well, it was only one or two missiles and minimum damage. That was not the intent. That the intent of the uh, Israeli response was to demonstrate to Iran that Israel can penetrate their air defenses and hit them where it hurts the most. And so that was a big message sent to Iran that you need to back out of this because Iran's attack was pretty much thwarted, as you said, with the coalition of U.S., European, and Arab neighbors. And so it was proven that Iran really has limited conventional capability to attack Israel, yet Israel maintains a pretty sophisticated capability to attack Iran if they want to. And I think that was a very strong message. And I think Iran will think twice before attempting what they did with their previous attack. All right, uh, very quickly on China, and I'm gonna ask you a diplomatic question, but we saw Anthony Blinken go in there a couple of days ago and, and basically not push them on any of the issues. They were talking about cooperating on fentanyl. Well, we know China doesn't cooperate. They do it. They, were talk they didn't even mention TikTok. Uh, do you think we're gonna get anywhere with those kind of conversations instead of tough talk with dealing with CCP? Well, we just have to realize that China is always looking out for their own interests. So we can't by, be naive about that. So we try to find out where we can cooperate them, but never let our guard down and understand that if there's an opportunity for their advantage, they will take it. Absolutely. We've seen it happen too many times. David Perkins, thank you, General. Appreciate you coming in. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.